דיינים שליטה, רבנים שליטה, רבצנס, פריים מיניסטר, Her Excellency, the Israeli Ambassador, President of the United Synagogue, Chairman of the Jewish Leadership Council, Deputy President of the Board of Deputies, representatives of all major political parties, distinguished guests too numerous to mention, ladies and gentlemen. Tamar Kedem, living on kibbutz near Oz in Israel, was in touch with friends in Australia. She texted the message, hi guys, we're doing okay. We're in a safe room in our house. One hour later, Tamar wasn't answering any calls. Nobody could in get in touch with her. And that is because Tamar Her husband, Yonatan, the very young daughters, Shachar and Arbel, and their son, Omer, had all been mercilessly and brutally murdered by terrorists. This is one of numerous instances of heinous crimes which have been perpetrated during the past few days. And here in the UK, We recall the life of Nathaniel Young, Zichrono Livracha Hashem Yikom Damo, who was killed. We're deeply concerned about Jake Marlow, who is missing, both of them graduates of JFS. Together with so many others, you know, when we are getting in touch with family and friends, all of us, the first question is, how are you? How's family? How is everything? And that's because hardly a single Jewish family in the UK doesn't have a direct connection to Israel at this time. This evening in our service, we'll be drawing inspiration from the book of Psalms. We'll be chanting this verse from Psalm 122. It's a call to Zion. For the sake of our brethren and friends, we seek your peace. And that is the call that we issue to this evening. We have brethren in Israel, parents, siblings, children, nieces, nephews. We have friends there. Israel is the very heart of not just the Jewish people, but the Jewish faith. And we send out a strong message to Achai our brethren and our friends in Israel this evening. You are not alone. We share your pain. We are crying with you. We share your anguish. We share your fate and your destiny, and we will always stand shoulder to shoulder with you in your time of stress. It has been so encouraging and so heartwarming for us to have received so many messages of support and solidarity. And having emerged from the two-day festival of Shmini Atzeret and Simchat Torah last night, I've just been flooded with so many messages from so many treasured friends, faith leaders, political leaders. And that is because no civilized person can be unmoved. No civilized person cannot be deeply shocked having seen the sights that have unfolded during the past few days. Prime Minister, thank you for your messages of support. To have seen 10 Downing Street lit up last night in the Israeli flag sends such an extraordinary message, not just to us, not just to Israel, throughout the Jewish world, throughout the decent world. We thank Sir Keir Starmer, leader of Her Majesty's official opposition, for his statements of support and solidarity for our community, for Israel. We thank leaders of other parties, together with so many. But Prime Minister, you know, this event was put together in such a short space of time 
and we issued the invitation. And you responded saying you want to attend. And you turned your diary upside down in order to be here. Not just to be here, but also shortly to have the opportunity to address us. A good friend is not just somebody who's with you when you celebrate. A good friend is also somebody who's with you when you're in sorrow. And the best of friends is somebody who's with you when you are in sorrow and others are questioning you. Because good friends are able to differentiate between the forces of darkness and the forces of light, between true and false, between right and wrong. And Prime Minister, you are a great and wonderful friend of our Jewish community and of the State of Israel. No words can adequately encapsulate our feelings of being so grateful to you for being with us right now. We know you and your government, and with some exceptions, yes, there are some exceptions, but you and your government and the British people are solidly behind that which is right and false go against that which is wrong. In our Psalms, in Psalm 128, we will declare, Ure'e vanime levanecha, shalom al Yisrael. God, may you bless us to see our children's children. May there be peace upon Israel. What's the connection between being able to see your children and your grandchildren and peace upon Israel? The connection is that it is possible that in the absence of peace, lives will be taken, people will be murdered. And parents might not see their children. Grandparents might not see their grandchildren. Maybe they'll die be murdered. Maybe even the grandchildren will be killed. Shalom al Israel. But peace upon Israel is the natural yearning and prayer of every Jewish soul. And that is why in Psalm 120, we declare, Ani shalom v'chi adaber, Hema la milchama. I am peace, but when I speak about peace, all they want is war. And that, I believe, encapsulates what we are enduring right now. Anishalom, it's not just I am for peace, but Anishalom, I am peace. We, the Jewish people, are synonymous with peace. That's what we yearn for, that's what we want, that's what we pray for. Peace comes at the heart of every single synagogue service and ceremony. However, sadly and tragically, you can't deny it. That's all our enemy right now is interested in. Milchama, war. You know, Israel is aiming to kill murderers. Hamas is aiming to kill innocent men, women, and children. Every civilian in Israel right now is on the front line of this war. And Israel has a responsibility to defend herself, the prime responsibility to make the country secure. And our foes are terrorists. Let no one question that. Let no one ignore the fact they are seeking to brutally murder innocent civilians. And when innocent Palestinian civilians die or are killed, that was not the intention. And of course, our hearts go out to all those who suffer the loss of innocence. Israel must continue to do whatever it can for the sake of her citizens. In Parshat Pinchas, we read about a plague of death amongst the Jewish people. And in Numbers chapter 26, God gives a commandment through Moses to the people, count the number of the people of Israel. And there are two conflicting midrashim. 
What was the purpose of the census? One Midrash says, it's like a shepherd who had a dear flock. And then wolves came and attacked the sheep. And after some were killed, the shepherd counted his flock in order to know how many were missing. The other Midrash says, it's like a shepherd looking after his flock. Wolves attacked them. Afterwards, the shepherd counted his flock to know how many had survived. Rav Soloveitchik taught from here that through Jewish history, we go through two phases when it comes to conflicts, when it comes to attempts to annihilate us. First of all, we count those who are missing. And afterwards, we count those who have survived. Right now, we're going through that first phase. We are counting those who are missing. We are hearing reports, hour on hour, more and more. People who have been mercilessly killed, the number now seems to have exceeded 1,000, with many thousands who have been injured with over 130 innocent, pure-hearted men, women, and children, some elderly, some tiny, who have been dragged from their homes, paraded in streets, and who are now being held as hostage. And we don't know where some people are. We're counting the missing. But says Rav Soloveitchik, we will emerge into the next phase, and in the next phase in Jewish history, we start to count those who have survived. We look to the strength that we have for the sake of the future. As we say at the Seder of Pesach, in every generation there are those who strive to annihilate the Jewish people. But Almighty God always saves us. We prevail. And once we start to count those who have survived, we draw our inspiration from those who went missing and those who were killed. And we guarantee that the forces of light will always prevail over the forces of darkness. And peace will prevail against every possible enemy. Israel today is strong. Yes, Israel has gone through numerous trials during the past year, but Israel is strong, and Israel is all the more strong because the Jewish world is with Israel, and so many others in the world are with us at this time. There is no doubt, even though we still will face added trauma, and God forbid, may it not be deep, we will nonetheless emerge, and we will be strong to face many more years. This Shabbat we read from the beginning of the Torah. And in the biblical count of creation, we see how the world at first was bathed in darkness, but out of that God created light. We see how at first the world was filled with tohu vavohu, chaos, confusion, but that was followed by order and peace. And that tonight is our prayer that the darkness we are currently experiencing will pave the way for peace for us and the entire region and the chaos and confusion will lead to a period of order and of peace. May it happen swiftly and decisively and successfully, not only for now, but also for the long term. Ose shalom bim romav, hu yase shalom aleinu, va al kol Yisrael, ve imeru, amen. May he who makes peace in high places bring peace for us and all the people of Israel, and let us say, amen. <laughs>